Thank you for, for coming on such a chilly day, and I, I'm delighted to uh, present perhaps uh, 25 or 30 minutes of comments and look forward to uh, interaction with you then on the questions you have. Um, I'm also very glad to see uh, Jim Phillips here. I've worked on terrorism issues with Jim for, it must be a quarter century now, and there are very few people in the world who write with the intelligence and prudence that uh, Jim Phillips does. Uh, here's a couple of reasons why I wanted to write the book, so I'll start this way, with, with, with the way terrorism encounters the citizen. I remember back in 1980, uh, reading some clippings in newspapers. It was in the Chicago area. And uh, a woman was looking out her window near her home, and she saw a van pull up. Uh, and uh, in that van, there proved to be some nine different people. And they looked rather like an athletics team, you know, the jogging uniforms and the bags. But as she looked out her window, uh, this lady, Mrs. Walter Jacobson, uh, decided that she should be a little nervous about this. There had been some robberies in the area by the FALN, who were Puerto Rican separatists, and uh, she noticed a few things that were odd to her. First of all, these athletic bags sure seemed much heavier than she was used to seeing with athletes. And secondly, uh, some of the guys were smoking. So she decided this wasn't a workout at all, and she thought for a minute, and she called the police, and in effect, she interrupted an, an armed robbery that was plotted by nine members of the FALN with two others uh, nearby. And there was a cache of weapons and a sawed-off shotgun and all that. And these all went to jail, these people. Although, oddly enough, at the end of his uh, tenure, uh, President Clinton pardoned a, a bunch of them. Well, one of the policemen who was there at the time said, just trying to be cheery, that they all felt lucky that day. And um, one of the others, a, a newspaper reporter, wrote that this happened during a routine traffic stop. And both of those accounts are really incorrect. It was really Mrs. Walter Jacobson. Uh, I've been unable to even find her first name, uh, a completely obscure case now. But she broke an attempted robbery of the greatest importance uh, by hardened terrorists uh, who all went to jail thanks to her intervention. So you know that phrase now. It started in New York, and it's now kind of a nationwide push by Department of Homeland Security that if you see something, say something. I like the phrase, and I think it captures well the sense that uh, we as citizens have both a, a duty and opportunity to be citizens in cases that do touch on civic uh, security. I like the slogan more than I do some which have more emphasis for example, you'll often see signs around military bases that say, if you see anything that looks at all suspicious, immediately report to authority X or Y. Uh, I would think it's better, really, uh, for the public to think a little bit, to contemplate a little bit, to ask themselves what they're seeing uh, and not to jump uh, to any conclusions too quickly. But I like the notion of this sort of a responsiveness among citizens. I do think that, uh, by and large, citizens have some understanding that they, that they are involved in some ways. Um, and I wrote in part to tell the book, uh, the to tell the stories of some citizens who've been involved in, and in good ways. In the spirit of Mrs. Jacobson, for example, uh, there was another person who was part of the Lackawanna community in New York. And no one ever has reported who this person is, although there's a good book on the case. Uh, the person suspected in watching some of the Yemeni men who'd come back in mid-2001, a portentous time, uh, from overseas, she felt that they were up to some bad things. And uh, she wrote in somewhat troubled English uh, to authorities and said they ought to look into this half dozen young men uh, who had come back because this person who wrote seemed to feel that those men were a sort of threat to the Yemeni community. And uh, he or she was absolutely right, and the uh, authorities did look into it. And uh, those people had not only been abroad to Southwest Asia, they most of them had been in a camp run by, Af uh, Afghan run by Afghanis and Osama bin Laden, and they were there for training. Now, I found another kind of category besides these persons who act privately and quietly. Uh, 
Uh, and another sort of group uh, that we have among us is those who really have tremendous physical courage and may not be looking for trouble, but seem to show uh, the right attitude and the response when, when, they, when the alarm bell sounds. Um, if we think back to 9-11, it is astonishing the way those uh, men charged down the aisle of the United Airlines flight over uh, Pennsylvania. Um, they knew from cell phone traffic uh, what had happened in New York City when they did that. Uh, and they were sort of, you know, minute men for our day. Except the analogy fails, really, doesn't it, uh, from Concord and Lexington commonalities because they didn't have muskets, but they were willing to charge. And we think that that's pretty unusual, and, and it is, especially in airplane situations. For decades, the counsel from authorities was always the same. Stay very calm, stay uninvolved, don't make eye contact, do what they tell you. Uh, but these people, knowing what they did on that day, made a different decision, and it was very heroic. And, and it, it wasn't freakish in the sense that since then, 2001 and 2009, we've had passengers subdue other terrorists, Richard Reed and Farouk al Dumalatab, And both of them had clothing treated with explosive material, you'll remember, and hoped to blow up the planes. Now, my favorite, actually, man on the spot is a woman, and that's Uli Derrickson. And this does go back a ways, but you may remember her a little bit. She was Central European. She was an American citizen, 40 years old. It was her fate to be the lead stewardess on TWA 847 on that flight. So Shiite uh, thugs had attacked the plane, taken people hostage, they were working a kind of perverse psychological approach to break down the passengers, uh, whipsaw everybody into confusion and, and submission. Well, Lily Derrickson was frightened, naturally. Who, who wouldn't be? But gradually, her composure returned, and she began thinking about what she could do to moderate this impossible situation. So, for example, it emerged that she spoke German, and uh, some, of the, some of the hijackers did as well. And that became the only common language, actually, that the, all the parties had. And she intervened, sometimes psychologically, sometimes uh, physically. Uh, they once asked her to sing German songs to, her, to them, uh, believe it or not, in the long, long drama of this hijacking. And she did so, very strange. Well, she and uh, the pilot, John Testrake, both showed amazing courage in the TWA 847 hijacking. Remarkable. Um, I suppose uh, we all admire this kind of thing. We wonder whether we'd ever be up to it ourselves. These people on the day proved themselves up to the level of events and extraordinary persons. Uh, the third category I found to look at is uh, sort of more predictable, the, 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 the tried and true professional. The person's trained to do the kind of intervention that sometimes happens, and it's not very often, but they are involved. Uh, we saw someone shot at Los Angeles Airport not too long ago. Um, not everybody in the business of security, private or public, might uh, be top of the line. Some might seem to us as airline passengers a little bit uh, disengaged, or uh, someone might be very good, but only in, in five years will they really know all their trade. Uh, but otherwise, we meet in public life many people who involved in the security business who prove themselves very capable. They, they rise to the moment. Maybe it takes you back too far, but in 1988, a remarkable occasion in New Jersey uh, is one of the things that makes the book for a paragraph or two. A, a trooper named Robert Saplinski took notice of a driver, as they are trained to do, and he pulled him over for a moving violation, but he saw through the windows that there were materials on the back seat, which he distrusted. And so quickly, a simple traffic stop turned into an arrest. So the man he caught that day was a man named Kikamura Yu. Kikamura Yu was a member of the Japanese Red Army, which had trained with uh, Libyans and many other international terrorists. And he was there on his way to New York to hit a Navy recruiting station. And this was uh, going to be the two-year anniversary of the bombing of Libya in 1986. And it was only Saplinsky's intervention then that saved uh, that 